Good day everyone. Today we will be talking about um, creating problem-based and project-based learning plans. So today's objectives will be the following. First is to define the define and describe open and the tools and how it promotes effective learning. Second is to determine the usage of these tools in teaching subjects in elementary grades. The third is to make example instructional materials and student projects using open ended tools. And lastly, is to design activities using open ended tools in a project based or problem based learning plans. So, hello everyone, good day, classmates, sir. You, good. Good day to each and every one of you. I'm Michael John P. Lambuno and so for today, firstly I'll be talking about the creating problem-based and project-based learning plans. Firstly, so what is an open-ended approach? So an open-ended approach at its framework is the open-ended approach or OPA framework consists two main sections understanding mathematical knowledge and applying mathematical knowledge now the sections were cross analyzed with students responses to provide a comprehensive analysis on how the teachers use various techniques to support the students okay and the open ended tasks have more than one right answer solution or outcome that can be completed in more than one way they can take the form of statements questions tasks projects or teaching methods now in different learners may use different types of thinking and there are no predetermined correct outcomes now next will be the now the open ended learning activities are provocative and stimulate divergent thinking about a topic Teachers' attitudes, uh, assessment criteria, and procedures must also encourage students to make different paths and offer creative responses. A unique contributions are welcomed. Now, Maker and Shavir identified these advantages of open questions. Now, they are to encourage many students to give responses, uh, encourage student-to-student -student interaction patterns, uh, elicit more complete and more complex responses and allow the students to give knowledgeable answers uh, encourage students to question themselves their classmates and their teachers uh, stimulate further thought and exploration and in open-ended activities work well in mixed ability classrooms because they have low floors and high ceilings this means that they require minimal background knowledge and also have high or no limits on the knowledge and skill participants might use and learn. Now next will be the examples for this. There are three tables and this section provides a variety of examples and resources for developing open-ended learning experiences. Now it begins with samples of different sizes from a social studies unit in Asia. The first set is small questions. Now the second are larger activities and the last is a project. Now assessment criteria and procedures are provided for each. Now let's go first to table 1. Now table 1 is an open-ended questions with assessment criteria. Now there are questions and the criteria for teachers feedback. In the questions for example, what impact do Asian countries have on our daily lives? So our criteria for the teachers feedback is have fluency or the number of ideas and scope of ideas or imports immigration culture towards the question. Now next is what impact does the United States have on the lives of people in Asian countries? Now same as the above about the fluency or number of ideas, scope ideas, imports immigration culture and etc towards the question. And the last example is that in what ways do you think your life is different from or the same as the life of a boy or a girl your age in Tokyo. Now for the criteria for teachers feedback is the scope, hobbies, transport, transportation, recreation, religion, sports, etc. towards the question. And the next table is the open-ended activity with assessment criteria. 
As you have an activity, you also have the criteria for evaluation and who will apply that towards the activity. For example, the activity will be design a mini poster about five locations in Asia that you find most fascinating. Use rich, colorful language to describe each one in a sentence so others will share your fascination. Now, for the criteria for that activity, is that you have a richness of vocabulary by score by teacher on a five point scale the interest of the activity scored by peers on five point scale and the accuracy of names and locations towards the activity scored by teacher a right or wrong so for the last table is a open-ended project with assessment criteria now if you have your project then you also have your criteria of, of, for the project the criteria for evaluation and who will apply them now for your project for example is study of a country prepare a presentation and materials to recruit new immigrants to asian country of your choice include information on the culture economy history population climate and geography and more now for the criteria for the project will be effectiveness towards the project plane tickets for peer evaluation no way one way and round trip originality for the project teachers judgment on a five-point scale and the effort for the project will be the evaluation or criteria for a self-evaluation on a five-point scale now that will be all for me and thank you for listening hello everyone this is Liza Jane E. Balatayo and for the continuation for the first topic I will be discussing about what is an open-ended question and the five essentials of open-ended lesson planning. So, what is an open-ended question? Open-ended question starts with the why, how, and what if. Open-ended questions encourage a full answer rather than a simple yes or no while close-ended questions can be answered with yes or no. Open-ended questions and close-ended questions can be used together in order to create fuller answers from respondents. Open-endedness during classroom discussions Despite a teacher's best effort to stimulate open, higher-level thinking during teacher-led discussions, Students often respond to questions posed by teachers as if there is one right answer. There are actually alternatives to the teacher's questions. A teacher's use of specific statements and silence as well as carefully constructed questions from peers or options. Dillian proposed seven effective alternatives to direct questioning when the purpose of discussion is to explore ideas and prompt higher level thinking. So first is the declarative statement. Second, reflective restatement. Third, declaration of perplexity. Fourth, invitation to elaborate. Fifth, class questions. Sixth, speakers questions. And lastly, deliberate silence. The five essentials of open-ended lesson planning. So first is provide and facilitate a solid introduction. This includes providing clear objectives and learning targets, making sure you introduce, scaffold, model and reteach concepts and techniques when appropriate and providing time to brainstorm, practice, and share. Second, make sure you have appropriate tools supplies, and adaptations for all your learners to create with. Third, emphasize personal connection, introspection, expression, and exploring interest. This is where really knowing your students and having a fantastic teacher-student relationship can really help facilitate meaningful and achievable results. Fourth, Make sure your lesson is truly open-ended. In a truly open-ended lesson, results will be unique to each student and related to their interest, skills, and ability level.
Hello everyone, I am Monique Laravel M. Yamis and in this video, we will be learning about the usage of open-ended tools in teaching subjects in the elementary grades. So what is an open-ended question? Open-ended questions are an effective way to challenge your students and learn more about how they think. They encourage extended responses and allow your students to reason, think, and reflect. Some examples of open-ended questions include, what do you think, and how did you decide? At first, it can be hard to incorporate open-ended questions into your daily routines and lesson plans. But with some practice, they can help you transform your classroom's learning environment and the way your students think about the world. Project-based learning. As with all lessons, requires much preparation and planning. It begins with an idea and an essential question. When you are designing the project and the essential question that will launch the activities, it is important to remember that many content standards will be addressed. With these standards in mind, devise a plan that will integrate as many subjects as possible into the project. Have in mind what materials and resources will be accessible to the students. Next, students will need assistance in managing their time, a definite life skill. Finally, have multiple means of accessing your students' completion of the project. Did the students master the content? Were they able to apply their knowledge and skills? Many educators involve their students in developing these rubrics. Open-ended activities. This type of strategy creates a dynamic environment that motivates and stimulates the students to engage in research and cooperative learning. Previous work using an open-ended, student-centered activity designed to stimulate critical thinking strategy in the integration of ethics into the sociology curriculum in South India showed that students found the program unique, thought-provoking, fully integrated, and relevant. In fact, Educational techniques that stimulate students' active participation are most effective in skill development and are essential to the success of dietetics professionals. For practical classes, research comparing the effectiveness of traditional cookbook-style low-inquiry level activities to high-inquiry level investigative projects shows that students prefer HL activities. Additionally, the HL project did not negatively impact the students' motivation and importantly, they link the HL activities to independence, responsibility, freedom, and personal relevance. That ends our discussion. Thank you so much for listening. So, hello everyone. Good day. So, how is everyone? I, uh, I hope everyone is okay and I hope that you learned something from our report. So, you've reached the last part of our uh, report, which is the assessment part. So, our assessment has two parts, part A and part B. So, part A, it consists of a multiple choice test with 10 items, and part B is an essay type test. So, uh, our test will be available until December 7, 2021 at 11.59 p.m. So... We will be sending you the link and just uh, fill in the Google form. So if you have any concern and clarification, uh, you can ask us on our group chat or you can leave a comment. Thank you.